So you can see here cell division does come up an awful lot and this year in the summer it was a question, 30 mark question there on section C. So cell continuity, what does it mean? So it means that all cells arise from pre-existing cells and we've covered this. So to do this living cells need to divide our cell division. Now very important, the function of cell division in single-celled organisms is reproduction. So like bacteria. So your example there, binary fission in prokaryotic cells. So binary fission is how bacteria cells reproduce. The function of cell division in multicellular organisms, us, is growth or repair of tissues. So watch the phrasing of this. You're going to say repair of tissues or growth of tissues. Okay, this is important. So you need to know the function of cell division in single-celled organisms and multicellular organisms. So let's look at our nucleus. So here we have our nucleus. Inside our nucleus we have our chromatin. So here is your chromatin. So this is your chromosomes when the cell is not divided. It's like a ball of wool. Okay. And when the cell is getting ready to divide during interphase, this chromatin will tightly condense. Okay. And eventually it'll become visible as chromosomes. Okay, let me just rub this out. So here's our nucleus. Within our nucleus, we have our chromosomes. Our chromosomes are made up of DNA and protein. We have our nuclear pore which allows, which we'll look at later, our mRNA to leave. We have our nucleolus, and that's where RNA is made. So your nucleus. So we've covered the function of the nucleus with cell, uh, cell structure. So chromosomes are thread-like structures. Chromosomes are made of DNA and protein. So 40% uh, DNA, 60% protein. Along your chromosomes, we have genes, okay? And what they do is they code for the production of a specific protein, okay? That's important. So every species has a set of chromosomes. So cells that have two sets of chromosomes are diploid. You need to know that definition. Diploid, two sets of chromosomes. So our cells are diploid. Okay, your body cells, your somatic cells. So humans have 46 chromosomes and are diploid, except for your gametes. So haploid, haploid means one set of chromosomes. So your gametes are haploid. So we have 23 chromosomes within the eggs and sperm. So diploid is 2N, haploid is N. You need to know these two definitions. Diploid, two sets of chromosomes. Haploid, one set of chromosomes. Now, so here we have diploid, 2N is equal to 4. So we have four chromosomes here. One, two, three, four. So if I did here, 2n is equal to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have n is equal to 3, one set of chromosomes, 1, 2, 3. If I had here, n is equal to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Diploid, two sets of chromosomes. Haploid, one set of chromosomes. Okay, so our cell cycle. So a cell's lifetime consists of the cell dividing or the cell not dividing. So it's like a pizza. One slice, small slice, that's when the cell division is taking place. The longest phase of a cell cycle, right, 90%, is interphase. And then we have our cell division. So your cell division is your prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Interphase is when the cell is getting ready to divide. Okay, so here we have a little brief over here view of your prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then in the blue here, we have interphase and what's happening. Now, interphase, longest part of a cell cycle. What's happening during interphase? So your chromosomes are elongated. Your chromosomes are visible as chromatin during interphase. Okay, so we cannot distinguish individual chromosomes at present because it's a mass of material called chromatin. So chromatin is when your chromosomes are not dividing. It's like a big ball of wool. Ball of wool. Now, what takes place during interphase? So cell organelles are made. Example, mitochondria and chloroplast. Okay. So it does produce some chemicals needed for growth. 
What cellular processes take place during interphase? DNA replication, photosynthesis. If we're making mitochondria, respiration can take place. If you're making within the plant's chloroplast, photosynthesis can take place. What biomolecules are made during interphase? So your nucleic acid, which can be either DNA or RNA, which links back to protein synthesis. We can make proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So you need to know, I would say you need to know about three things that take place during interphase. So remember, interphase is the longest part. Interphase, the cell, is not dividing. It's getting ready to divide, okay? So here's my interphase there. This is your, sorry. This is your mitosis. Okay. So here we have our chromosome versus our chromatin. Within the nucleus, we have our chromatin. So remember, your chromatin is when the cell is not dividing during interphase. Your chromosomes are going to become visible as we come on to prophase. So what's the difference between chromatin and chromosomes? So chromatin is unraveled DNA. Chromosomes, they're tightly packed. Chromatin is long in the elongated thin fibers. Chromosomes, they're thick fibers. Chromatin is in the cell during when, when it's not dividing during interphase. Chromosomes are visible when the cell is dividing during mitosis or meiosis. Chromatin is not paired. Chromosomes are paired. Okay, so we're going to look here for cell division and mitosis and meiosis. With mitosis, so it's a form of nuclear division, and what we want to produce is two genetically identical daughter cells. Okay, so they're going to be genetically identical to whatever the parent is. So it means they're going to have the exact same number of chromosomes. With meiosis, so meiosis is your gametes. Okay, so your egg, the sperm. So meiosis is a form of division that produces four daughter cells. They're not genetically identical, so it brings about variation. And the number of chromosomes is halved. So here we have a quick overview of comparing mitosis to meiosis. Mitosis produces four daughter cells. They are genetically identical to the parent. So in this cell here, we have four chromosomes. So this means here we have four chromosomes. In this cell here of meiosis that's dividing, we have produced four daughter cells. They have half the number of the parent cells. So there's four here, so that means each one of these has two. And these are not genetically identical, so variation has been brought about. Now, the role of mitosis. So the role of mitosis is growth and repair of tissues. So growth of tissues, repair of tissues in multicellular, which we covered before. And again, reminding you, in unicellular organisms, it's reproduction. I can bracket off there, asexual. Of mitosis, there's four phases, four stages. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, I is your interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So, you can party Monday and Tuesday. You can pass my algebra test. You have to know those four stages and the order in that they come. Now, terms that we're going to look at that will help us for this chapter. Chromatid pairs, what does it mean? So all chromosomes replicate themselves before cell division. There's two identical chromosomes called a chromatid pair. This will be a chromatid pair. They are identical. The centromere, so it's the structure on the chromosomes that hold the pair of chromatids together. So this blue could be my centromere. Centrioles are the organelles in the cytoplasm that produce the spindle fibers. So we'll look here, my centrioles, it will produce our spindle fibers. And your spindle fibers, they're the filaments that will attach themselves to the chromosomes during mitosis. Okay, so let's look at prophase first. You need to be able to draw prophase, you need to be able to recognize prophase, and you need to be able to explain what's happening during prophase. So in prophase, your chromatin has contracted. So now it's visible as chromosomes. So your chromosomes are now as chromatid pairs. Another very important thing is that your nuclear membrane has broken down. And we have centrioles also found at either side of the cell. So, prophase, your chromatin contracts, it's visible as chromosomes. Your nuclear membrane, which you can see here in the diagram, has broken down. 
And we also have our centrioles, and they're found either side of the poles. Metaphase, the second phase, middle. So this is where you can see here we have our, chrom our chromosomes, and our chromosomes are lined along the middle, lined along the equator. You can see that they have spindle fibers attached, and the spindle fibers is attached to the centromere. So this starts when the nucleate membrane is broken down. So we can say here spindle fibers attached to the centromere. Spindle fibers pull the chromatids to the middle, to the equator. So that's important. So that's metaphase, which leads us on to anaphase. So from the diagram, you can see that the spindle fibers are now shorter. So the spindle fibers have actually contracted and they've pulled the centromere away and the chromosomes are therefore pulled to opposite side. One chromosome will go to the left, one chromosome will go to the right. So this is the shortest phase in mitosis. So the spindle fibers contract, causing the centromeres to split. One strand of each chromatid pair is, po uh, is pulled to opposite poles. Okay, so each chromatid pair is pulled to opposite poles. So you need to be able to recognize that in a diagram or draw that in a diagram. Telophase. So if we look at the diagram of telophase, we can see our nuclear membrane is starting to reform. We can see that our chromosomes have condensed, elong decondensed, and our chromosomes are now visible as chromatin. So your spindle fibers have broken down. We can see that there, they're not there. Our chromosomes have elongated and they've now formed chromatin, and your nuclear membrane has reformed. So you need to be able to draw this and you need to be able to explain it and recognize it. Okay. So for example, you can see here, there's one, two, three, four. So this is actually two N is equal to four. Okay, so they may ask, say to you, where two N is equal to four, draw a metaphase. Where two N is equal to four, draw anaphase. So watch that, please. Now, what happens at the end? Cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is when here our cells, our two cells are going to separate. So straight after telophase, the cell divides into two distinct cells. So we're going to look at the difference between animal cells and plant cells. In us, animal cells. What forms here is the, called the cleavage furrow. So here is your cleavage furrow. So that's what's before the cell splits, we have cleavage furrow forms in animal cells. In plant cells, a cell plate is going to form down your middle lamella. So a cell plate forms along the equator. And we have our middle lamella. So now we can see that there's two cells here. So you need to know after telophase, what happens in an animal cell and within a plant cell. Meiosis. So we talked a little bit briefly about it there. So meiosis is a form of cell division. We have Produce, we're going to produce four daughter cells. These daughter cells are going to have half the number of chromosomes to the parent. They're not genetically identical, so variation is going to be brought um, about and half the number of chromosomes. So meiosis is a form of nuclear division where a diploid cell produces four haploid daughter cells. They contain half the number of chromosomes and it brings about, I'm going to write it here, variation. So what is the role of meiosis? So it allows for sexual reproduction. Okay, and this will only take place within these gametes. So every other part of our body for the cells dividing is, my, my, is mitosis. It's only the gametes that it is meiosis. So the difference between mitosis and meiosis, they may ask us about this. Mitosis produces two daughter cells. Meiosis is four. Mitosis, the daughter cells will have the exact same number of chromosomes to the parent, to the original. In meiosis, they have half the number of chromosomes. In mitosis, all the cells are genetically identical to the parent. In meiosis, this variation has been brought about. Now, what is cancer? It is uncontrolled mitosis, so it doesn't know when to stop. So it doesn't, it goes to prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, it just keeps going on. So usually it's the gene there that, that's been affected that won't actually tell the cell to stop dividing. So the rate of mitosis is usually carefully controlled. Okay, for normal growth and repair. Cells that lose control of mitosis may form a mass of cells. A mass of cells is called a tumor. Okay, so cancer is uncontrolled mitosis. A mass of cells is called a tumor. But not all tumors are bad. Some are benign and some are malignant. 
So benign means kind, like warts would be a benign, uh, benign one. Fibroids for females. So malignant tumours, so this mass of cells um, may be harmful to other cells. Now, possible causes of cancer. It could be caused by a mutation, which we'll look at in more detail when we do um, genetics. It could be caused by a carcinogen, for an example, cigarette smoke or asbestos. It could be caused by radiation, UV light, or smoking, or it could be genetic. So most cancers can be cured early uh, by early diagnosis and treatments. So I would look at knowing two causes there. Possible treatments, surgery, caught early, so removal of the tumour. Sorry, another possible treatment could be radiation, or another possible treatment could be chemo. Chemotherapy, and what chemotherapy is actually doing is slowing down the rate of mitosis, so that's why some people, that's why people doing chemo may lose their hair follicles, may lose their hair. Okay, this chapter's done. <laughs>